So yeah, hi everyone. So today we are going to see a Snowflake introduction and demo. And uh, we always wanted to you know, start classes by providing what uh, market is, how the market is going, like what is the bridge between each technologies. And we want to give the knowledge of, you know, uh, how you can learn yourself. Like uh, this is the, this are the entire things you can learn by yourself that we always wanted to give before we start any online class. So this is one such thing. And uh, today we are like, uh, let me just share my screen and show you. <clears throat> so we are going to be presenting Snowflake training. Today will be the demo. It's like an introduction session where you will get to know what is the Snowflake, where it stands in the state tech stack. If you complete something like, if you complete the Snowflake, where you will land all these things you will get to know. And today's session will be taken by uh, Satish, who is also known as tech trainer. And uh, she is a uh, SnowPro certified AWS Cloud Teradata, and you can see all the certification. <laughs> I think next time when he takes the class, I need to put extra slide for a certification alone. So Satish will be taking the training, and he has already vast experience, and he has uh, trained more, uh, like more than two hundred people. And yeah, hi Satish, welcome, and thanks for uh, you know taking the class. Uh, now the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Arun. Uh, hi team, good morning and welcome to the Snowflake Data World. So, I just uh, wanted to understand, I just, uh, like, I think there are around uh, uh, 20 participants. I will broadly classify either most of you would have worked on big data or the ETL tools, all the database, data warehousing technologies like Oracle, Teradata, NetEase, or few of you would have been from reporting or uh, uh, visualization. Are there anyone outside this scope? Is there anyone outside this scope? Anyone purely from uh, uh, programming background like Java or Python? Or anyone who is not aware of the SQL? You can ping in the chat or you can unmute and speak. Hey, there is fine. I just wanted to know the context. If someone is outside this world, then it will be easier for me, okay, to classify where Snowflake would fit in. And anyway, I specify for ETL databases, uh, reporting tools, how Snowflake comes into the picture. Okay, let me share my screen and I'll take over. I will set the context. What is Snowflake? Okay, how clients and projects are using the Snowflake? Then I will give you a brief about the Snowflake uh, screen, you, you know, UI and how we can access through the command line interface. Then I will talk about the job process. So in this order, I will take it and then I will open up uh, the forum for the question. Before we start, uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. Aru has already done. Uh, with respect to Snowflake, I have been working for the last uh, four and a half years. And I am Snowpro Core Certified and Snowpro Architect Certified. Let me share my screen. You'll be able to see. What is Snowflake first? Snowflake Computing, it's a uh, company. It is it started as a cloud data warehousing company. And right now it has rebranded itself as a cloud data company. So it is expanding its horizon from warehousing to handling all of the data lakes. But when it started, it started with it as a cloud data warehouse. And the vision is to provide all users anytime, anywhere insights so that they can make come actionable decisions based on data. And we know that who are aware of the data warehousing, data warehousing is exactly used for data analytics. For that, Snowflake has built a next generation data warehouse from the ground. Its architecture is completely different to whatever other architectures you would have seen until now. It sets the Snowflake apart from its competitors. What are the competitors of Snowflake? If I talk about uh, in on-premise, we have Teradata, NetEase, few others. In cloud itself, we have Redshift that is from AWS, then Synapse from Azure and Google BigQuery from GC. And for analytic point of perspective, we have uh, uh, big data as well. But still, 
Snowflake is gaining the market because its its architecture is completely built from a scratch up and it is only built for the cloud. And within the cloud platform, Snowflake is delivered as software as such. In the cloud platform, the different kinds of services you get are infrastructure as service, platform as service, uh, software as service, and serverless. Snowflake is delivered as software as service. You don't need to do anything. No installations, no maintenance, no downtimes. Everything is taken care by Snowflake. All you have to do is maintain your applications. And it is extensively used. And before I go, Snowflake, when I say it is being provided as software as service, right now you can enable your Snowflake on three cloud regions. That is AWS, Azure, and GCP. So it started in the year uh, 2012. It was founded Snowflake in 2012, and in 2014 it went live. It went live with being hosted on AWS. Then in around 2018, it started being hosted on Azure, and in 2020 it started supporting GCP. That is why the when you host your Snowflake account, first thing what you have to do is we need to select which cloud service provider you want to host. Now within the cloud service provider, you get to pick which region you want to host on. You, if you want to get the list of all the regions that each cloud service providers, let's say if I take AWS, AWS, you can pick any of the region where you want to. Pick any of the region where you want to host. Now, if you see, there are multiple regions being supported by AWS. We have Azure. There are few regions that are being supported. We come to GCP because it is recently has come up in 2020. Right now, it supports only three regions. So, first you need to determine where, which cloud service provider you want to host on and in which region you want to host on. There are different editions. So, you can pick any of the editions to enable your you know, services on the cloud using this one. The prospects, which region to pick, which cloud services to pick, and which edition to pick, we will discuss in detail during the training. Now, if you see in the market, there are other cloud service providers like IBM, then uh, Salesforce, we have Alibaba. Probably they may also come up in the future. This is the current scope or current ecosystem how Snowflake is present. Now the next question, how clients are using Snowflake? We'll start as a data warehouse because Snowflake itself started as a data warehouse. The function, the use case of data warehouse is get the data from different sources and you organize the data in such a way that, that you will be able to do the faster analytics. Why you need faster analytics? So that you can take decisions within a matter of seconds. Looking at the analytical scope. And Snowflake is no different. It is majorly being used as a for a data warehousing purpose. You get the data from different sources, from uh, online transactional processing sources like SAP, Oracle, SQL Server. You get the data from IoT, you get the data from flat files, real time data. Everything you process, you store it in Snowflake and you process it. That data, whatever is the process data, the analytical data, it is being consumed by either the reporting teams or reporting tools or the visualization tools, or you can live share the data, or you, it can be used for uh, data analytical services. Furthermore, uh, analytical services. That is primarily most of the customers are using it so that as a data warehouse. And few use it as a data marts. Data marts is nothing but it's a 
similar to data warehousing, but data marts are focused on specific functional areas. What is an advantage? What is different in software? First thing first, it is a unique architecture. Most of the architectures, if you worked on database, either you will you would have seen it as a shared data architecture or shared nothing architecture. Classic examples of shared nothing architecture are Teradata and it is unknown. You'll have AMS and uh, VProx. AMS, VDIS. And that is that shared nothing architecture is enabled by massive parallel processing. Shared data architecture, there is only one storage, multiple resources. But the issue with shared data architecture is it is was leading to contention when multiple compute resources are using the same data. Snowflake architecture is called a multi-cluster shared data. So there is going to be only one storage where and the storage supports not only structured data, Snowflake storage supports semi-structured data and unstructured data as well. So Snowflake right now is supporting structured data, semi-structured data, and this year they opened up even for unstructured data. And you have only one storage for any kind of data you are bringing into the Snowflake. And you can create a multiple compute resources to access the same data. And you can instantly, unlimitedly scale compute and storage resources independently. This is very, very unique. Most of the databases of data warehouses, compute and storage are tightly coupled. If you want to increase the storage, you want to increase the compute as well. If you want to increase the compute, you can increase, you have to increase the storage as well. Satish. Uh, I just take a. Oh yeah, go ahead. Someone wants to. Yes, sir. Something? I just want to pass my questions, but uh, it is making me. If I pass my question, I will forget something. So I just interrupting here. Sorry for that. So like you can uh, drop the what... question in the chat. You can oh, okay. not, not forget. Drop it in the chat so that I will take it up. Because few of your questions can be clarified as it progress as well. Okay. So if why, something is yeah. not clarified. I will take it up as well. So how it is different from Spark computing and this one? Because you already have everything in Spark computing. So why we are going for Snowflake kind of thing while we have a kind of technology here? And uh, is it a distributed computing here? Doing any distributed computing here in uh, Snowflake? Uh, since I know Snowflake is a data warehousing kind of thing, uh, it hasn't been established previously in the past. So how it is useful currently in the current market? Like uh, Likewise, I have plenty of doubts in this. So I'm asking these questions. Yeah, that is fine. I will take it up at the end. I have personally haven't worked on Spark, but I will bring it up at the end the comparison. Okay. Now I'm fine just then. I'll park it for the end for a question. I said it compute and storage can be independently scaled. And it is a single place for all your data needs. Structured, semi-structured. Now this year it started supporting unstructured data. Because Snowflake is being delivered as a software as a service, as a user, whoever is maintaining the applications, the clients, all they have to do is they just have to do the minimal management. They need not get the infrastructure. They need not maintain the operating system. They need not worry about the upgradations, the software, software upgradations. Most of the on-premise you see, they will take the downtime of eight hours, 10 hours to upgrade from one version to another version. And it, is a lot of stress and work on the people, especially the DBS. The software as service on the cloud, it eliminates everything. Absolutely, we take zero downtime. And Snowflake guarantees 99.99% .99 of your data availability. And for whatever you use, you can scale storage and compute independently, and you pay for what you use. Storage independently, you pay, and compute resources, you pay independently. Another thing is, you can instantly live share the data. You can share the data with Snowflake users and non Snowflake users. There is a unique feature called a share. Snowflake architecture has three layers compute layer, storage layer, and cloud services layer. And this whole of the Snowflake service will be hoisted on any of your cloud service plan. If you are picking AWS where you want to host your snowflake, then it will be 
this snowflake will be hosted on vpc of the public cloud aws vpc is virtual private cloud so this all of this thing is maintained by snowflake and snowflake internally relies on the infrastructure of the cloud service provider which you are choosing i will not go more into the details which anyway will be covering as part of the training and someone was asking something so like so it can stand independent okay where you can get the data so like in order to get the data into the data warehouse most of the ways is either to etl or eld snowflake recommends eld you extract the data load it in the snowflake and do the transformation how you can do the transformation snowflake is based on the sql engine it supports ansi sql so the transformations are possible to the sql it supports or it recommends eld but if you want to get the data you can use etl tools as and snowflake has technology partners and solution partners and its ecosystem is very very vast whatever i am showing is the limited so it you can do you can connect snowflake with the data integration for getting the data or replication tools mostly common things are material and informatic talent you can connect with the business intelligence tools like power bi tableau cognos micro strategy bob j and sigma domo along with that it supports and analytics and machine learning like r spark you can connect to snowflake using python programmatic languages and you can use development tools like dpt and it is you can connect the innovative technologies like alien to snowflake It, though it can stand independently it can be collaborated or it can be integrated with other services and other tools as well. and the ecosystem is very very vast this is just a snippet of it someone wants to know what is a snowflake once you choose the cloud service provider and your region you get a ui like this there are two kinds of ui right now this is called a classic interface then there is a new interface that is a snow set this is like we don't do any download of software and moreover snowflake is not for on premise there is no software which you can maintain on premise everything is cloud all you get is it's a click away and right you can start building your applications as simple as and you pay for whatever you use at the end of the month. this is the ui okay we have multiple options we have storage separate where you create your databases within the databases you create your tables views schemas formats and then for compute resources we have <coughs> warehouses then there are data shares where you can share the data live data with other snowflake users or non snowflake users this is the place where you execute your sql and you see the logical way how your data is organized for any query you run you would be able to see in the list there are multi every running query or completed query will be associated with the query id and within the query id you can see the query plans at an account section you can see what you are using how much are the compute resources you are using how much is the storage you are using and what are the data transfer cost and when i talked about a data transfer cost anything that comes into snowflake is free of cost but anything outside this it is going out of snowflake it will be charged and that also will be free of cost let's say you i hosted this snowflake account on aws us west if i am unloading the data from snowflake to aws which is on us west there are not going to be any data transfer cost as well. but if i are unloading the data from snowflake to let's say azure or gcp or aws which is in asia pacific movement then you will have minimum data cost so this is a place where we monitor or we track what are the compute resources storage and data transfer and your billing information will be published here 
and this is a place where users are created roles policies and for whatever is the compute you are using you can monitor it so snowflake is very simple first thing is it's very easy for users to learn the snow because it is dependent on the ansi sql whatever is the sql you know the same thing would work here as well. and the best thing is you get the user interface apart from this you can connect through the command prompt as well so it supports command line interface as well i'm able to log into snow sql I'm able to log in to Snowflake using the command line interface. Apart from this, you have a download options. You can connect through users, through JDBC drivers, ODBC drivers, or Python components for programming, Node.js, Spark, and Go programming. No CD we use for connective diagnostic. But as such, you can independently maintain your application just like this. From anywhere, you would be able to access this. Okay. This is a user interface. And this is as simple. If you see, right, that SQL is kind of SQL should run, would be very, very simple. If you want, even if you're not aware of SQL, if you wanted to create a database, just go to the databases option. Let's say create some database. Unlike you would not specify how much storage this should be and nothing. There is no hard limits in Snowflake. You create the database and start using it. How much the data you bring, Snowflake would be taking in all the data. And you pay for the average storage you are using per month. So you created the first database, same would be reflected here. See? First database. By default, there are two schemas, information schema and public schema. Information schema does have the DPC information or the metadata information related to the database and account level. It has the views. This is not this information schema is not for the user where he can create the tables. Either he can create the tables in a public schema that is generated by default, or user can create a new schemas. So in Snowflake, data is organized in the manner under an account. You can have database under database. You can have schemas under schemas. You can have tables. Go to the database. This is the first database which I created. Go to the schema. Create the schema. Go to the objects. You can see there's a first schema created. So it's up to you. You can use either use this public schema to create your tables or per schema, or any you can create any number of schemas to organize your data. If you want to create a table, go go to the tables, create a table. Randomly, I'm selecting. First table, where you want to organize, where you want to create, either public or per schema. Let me leave it as per schema. Add the columns. ID. Name. It's user uh, friendly. All you can do is in the user interface. But there will be an SQL that will be running in the backend. You are already aware of SQL. Directly, you could have created through even SQL. As well. So, all this it supports. You would be able to create the objects using the UI, or you can directly use the worksheet to ex execute your SQL. Go check your data warehouse. 
under first schema. Now you have a first table. Now you can insert the data into this first table. Or if you wanted to create some other table, let's say you wanted to create first table in public schema. Right now, same thing I can use to the SQL as well. Now, right now, public schema doesn't have any table. You can even create it. I created on first DB. So, first DB dot public, give the table name and give the data types. You execute it. Refresh it. You can see the first table even under public screen. You observe, I created the same table, but you will be able to create it because the schema is different. But you will not be able to create the same table again unless you replace it. Then it's business as usual. You can insert the data. You can insert the data. You can select the data. You don't want to always pass the first database and first schema. Set your default database for the session. First DB schema and which schema you can set the default schema and start using it. You can do your updations, deletions. It's all normal and CSV. So it's very easy for the users to migrate or to learn Snowflake if you're already aware of SQL and you, you are already working on on-premise databases. It's easier for you to switch over to Snowflake. Very simple. This is just the you know brief where you cre create your databases and you can insert the data. You have the files. You can load the files as well. You have the data here. Let's say you wanted to load the data. Click on the table, load the files. It needs some compute resources. Select the files from your system. Let's say I'm selecting something like contacts. Next. Next. You have an option. No, anyway, the file will fail. The load will fail because the file is different and the table is different. But you have an option to load the files here using the UI itself. We'll discuss more what are the file formats, what way you can, what all the file formats that are supported, how you can load the data, different options to load, and all during the day. But for a users, if you are first time looking at Snowflake, very user friendly, easier to you know adapt, easier to learn. And coming to the market, how oh, Snowflake, I told you what are the different shaders. The classic example, not even going and comparing with AWS. If I compare this Snowflake with Redshift itself, if someone already worked on AWS Redshift. So in AWS, you when you Open in Amazon Redshift. Redshift is a data warehousing service within AWS. If you wanted to maintain AWS, first thing you need to do is create a cluster. When you are creating a cluster, it will ask you what type of nodes you want to use. There are different kinds, RA3 node types, then dense compute and dense storage. This, but this, they come with harder limits. If you are selecting this node, you get this much amount of CPU. This many CPUs and this has this much of RAM and you will have this much of storage. You can see there is a hard limit being passed and your compute and storage is tightly coupled. You wanted to increase the compute, your storage is also increasing. You pick something in dense compute. Okay, you will get more compute 
and there is say, storage associated. If you want to increase the compute, storage is also increasing. They are tightly coupled. But in Snowflake, if you observe, whatever I have shown you, it, when I'm creating a tables or databases, nowhere it is mentioned, it should be associated with this much storage or it should be associated with this much compute. For compute, we use warehouses. You can create multiple warehouses of different sizes and different options, which we'll discuss later, what and all are the options. And there's no relation between this compute and this storage. You can use to query, to do any analytics, any, any warehouse of any size, and you can scale the compute resources independently and storage independently. And your billing is also different. If you go and check the billing usage, your compute is tracked separately and storage is tracked separately. So within its competitors, within its on-premise data warehouse, there is a huge difference. Obviously, when there is no dependency <coughs> on storage and compute, user has a power. How much ever data you want, you can use only for storage. You don't want to use the compute. It's fine. You can use it. That is why few of the projects can use Snowflake as data lake as well. And if you see the billing or the storage, the cost associated with storage is equivalent to the S3 storage. Example, if you go and see, if I'm picking AWS and if I'm picking any region, let's say Asia Pacific Mumbai. See the cost associated with storage. Capacity storage is $25 per TB per month. Go and check the same cost in AWS. S3 standard. First 50 TB is 0 0.023 per GB. So it is around $23 per TB. And it's equal to S3 is a standard simple storage service in AWS. And moreover, it is for Ohio region. Let me see what is for Asia Pacific moment. It is 25 TB. And Snowflake is costing the same $25 per TB. So the cost is not, it's not like it's storage, it's costing exuberant amount. It is costing the same amount of what your S3 storage is costing. Few of the projects they want, they just instead of keeping it in S3, they just leave it in Snowflake itself. Only thing they will go to S3. If you are choosing any other service other than S3, because in S3 itself, you have different options. Okay, not the standard. You want something for uh, archival purpose. Your archival, you'll get it at much cheaper cost. Deeple archival is at, you see, $2 per month. For infrequent access, it is $13.8. So unless you want to store the data that you don't access it frequently, then that is the when you can unload for Snowflake and store it in blob storages like AWS S3 or Azure container or GCS buckets in GC. Now, if you have to compare with other technologies or other competitors, if competitors on on-premise, as I said, Oracle Exadata, Netiza, Teradata, for sure there will be similarity and there will be differentiators. Okay, what similarities? Yes, there will be. What clients are focusing is on the differentiators. On-premise and cloud, obviously there's no match because most of the projects are now going to the cloud. If you talk about the similarities with on-premise, the massive parallel processing architecture and native SQLite are similarities. Of course, the differentiators will be related to the cloud. Instant scalability, separate compute and storage, 
no need of data distribution. Most of the databases work on primary indexes, primary keys and all. In Snowflake architecture, we don't use the indexing concept at all. With respect to Cloud EDW, like Redshift, Azure, and BigQuery, similarities are all are cloud data warehouses, so no physical data warehouse, you know, hardware to manage and no S. Both all are dependent on SQL. How is it different with them? The concurrency, okay, and separate few of the, as I said in AWS, there is a differentiator with the compute and storage and much easier to use and integrate with other tools and technologies. If you are using something in Redshift or Azure Pace or Azure, you know, GCP, BigQuery, you will be easily able to integrate within the services. But if you wanted to integrate with the tools that are outside the service, it can be a bit tough. But with Snowflake, it is easier. With respect to Hadoop, you have Cloud Era, you know, Map R and Similarities are parallelism, they support semi structured data. And but the differentiator in Snowflake is you need not manage the files and all. And even for to query the semi structured data, use SQL. With Spark, Presto, BigQuery, similarities are storage and computer separate and parallelism. But in Snowflake, you need not manage the files and you can query using a database. I think this is one of the question. How is it different from Spark? But this is the answer. So having said that, okay, I will open up the forum for every one of you. Okay, we have another 20 minutes. So I know and I expect a lot of questions before I talk about the job perspectives. First, let me clarify your doubts. Then let's talk discuss about the job perspectives. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you. Thanks. It was really technically very good. So a few doubts which we have it in the chat box. Let me read it. So first is asking difference between Spark versus Snowflake. Uh, as I said, as I, you can see on my screen, Spark, because every competitor will have the similarities. And the similarities are there between Spark and Snowflake. But the differentiator is in Snowflake, you need not manage the files. Okay. I personally did not work on Spark, but mm -hmm. if it says so, that means that in Spark you may not you may have to manage the files. Correct. Right. Right. So yeah, in Spark said I can explain. So Spark versus uh, Snowflake, right? What is the difference? Main difference is Spark is like you know it's like a, a processing engine which uh, can run anything and uh, you can run bad jobs, everything you can run. But Snowflake, on the other hand, it is you can get the results much faster. So Snowflake is mostly focused on handling um, like large data with uh, you know with less time. That's what the warehouse is built for, right? But uh, Spark is not like that. It can do stream processing, batch processing, everything. So Spark is not a direct competitor to Snowflake, I would say. But yeah, some projects are getting replaced by Snowflake because their entire use case is solved by Snowflake. So that's the difference. Spark can support ETL everything. Snowflake is also slowing coming into the way. So that's what, uh, from my experience, I understand. So I have a question like, uh, so how it is like, uh, is it doing any uh, parallel, uh, see, uh, distributed computing? Uh, why? Because uh, if, uh, if you compare it with Redshift, it is a massive parallel processing kind of thing. And how uh, Snowflake, if you have uh, such a huge amount of data, Without mm -hmm. massive processing or distributed computing, how Snowflake is executing and giving the queries as uh, in a short period of time. I just want to understand that computation part mm -hmm. in Snowflake. The, the, the entire training, uh, we will discuss it about it, but to give you an answer, it enables massive parallel processing without an indexing concept. But it, that is why I said Snowflake is built from the scratch. It has its own architecture, very different from everything. Mm -hmm. Snowflake distributes something like a micro partitions. How the micro partitions, how the data will be distributed and all, uh, that is, uh, you know, that itself is a huge problem. Ah, okay, got it. Okay, okay. fine. But if you see, right, Thank when you. I compare, I say that even Snowflake enables massive parallel processing. Now mm -hmm. the question comes, how is it enable massive parallel processing without indexing concept? Because okay, of that's what technology. Oh. Okay. okay, because of its got, got it. Fine. 
Okay, and one more question we have is what is a uh, processing tool used, DBT or others? I think Suganti has this question. So Suganti, to answer your question, right? As I said, Snowflake can integrate with the development tools. As such, Snowflake has its own development tool. You can see the user interface where I ran the code. You can use the command line interface. So if you want to other like Toad or you wanted to use a DBT tool very much, you can integrate Snowflake with other tools. It depends upon your project environment. Okay. But because Snowflake is dependent on SQL, you can directly execute your SQL command on CLI, no SQL or user interface. But you want to integrate with other development tools, you can do that. And one more question, like uh, whether Snowflake uses um, like AWS, like own computation power or it is using AWS, the cloud's computation power? No, Snowflake uses its own compute power. That is the warehouses. That's why when I talked about the architecture, Snowflake charges you for the storage and Snowflake itself manages the, the data you are bringing into Snowflake. But Snowflake in turn make use of the cloud's infrastructure. How and all is up to Snowflake. From a user perspective, from a user perspective, the storage and compute are within the software. Mm -hmm. You will have this more understanding during the course content. I think that's it on the questions. But any other questions before I go to the job market? Yeah, Shatish, uh, from my side, one question. Uh, hello? Yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, actually, uh, is this uh, Snowflake is uh, uh, suitable for core DBA, like uh, Oracle core DBA, Postgres core DBA, and any other core DBA? Because I'm working as a core DBA in uh, Postgres and Oracle and MongoDB. So is it uh, suitable for uh, a candidate like me? I mean, yes, very much. See, any database or data warehousing, we require a DBA roles. But if you see, right, the market is being diluted. Previously, you should have something like a DBA role, developer role. Now, yes. if you see the jobs in the market, you will see something like a data engineer. Uh, no, I agree. Data, okay, so then, then who is going to take care of the installation, uh, patching? Who no, going? No, I will tell you. I will tell you. Now, first thing, unlike on-premise, we don't have the installations, patching, data backups, and all automatically maintained by Snow. You know, what is the role of a DBA? And the background, who is going to take care of that in Snowflake? That Snowflake itself is going to take care. Installations and all. We are not, as a user, there's nothing like installations you do. Right now, if you see Snowflake version, it, let's say 5.7. Next week, it can become 5.8. Automatically, your Snowflake, all your Snowflake accounts will be migrated by Snowflake team itself. Mm -hmm. and DBA. Now, where DBA comes into Snowflake picture? I talked about the roles the accesses, the policies, okay? How you monitor your compute resources, how you monitor your storage, okay? All these are the ones that are managed by DBA. Okay, not, DBA now may not worry about a few of the backups as well. You can take a backups, okay? Or you can take a backups within the Snowflake or you can take the backups by extracting them to S3. Mm -hmm. These are the works the DBA does, but they do not worry about the installations, patches, and all. Those and all are automated. You do not worry much about the capacity planning. Now, on premise, you would have seen if a new application is coming into the, uh, if they wanted to use like Oracle, new project is coming to your client. First, you see whether you have the infrastructure to accommodate the data that comes in. But capacity planning and all, you do not worry about it this thing because it's you can scale unlimitedly and you pay for what you use. Okay. Okay. So there are DBA roles. If you see, come to the certification perspective, right? There are roles, specific roles that are related to architect, then engineer, then DBA and all. As a DBA, you talk about the data replication. Okay. If you wanted to do the data replication, DBA will do that. You want to share live share the data, only DBA has an access. You set up the roles, all the you know discretionary access control and the uh, reback role-based access control is most of the databases use. That all control is on the DBA's hands. Thank you, Satish. Yeah. No, but it's like one question. 
Yeah, I'll just complete. It's like it's Snowflake. If you are a developer, you can learn Snowflake. If you are a DBA, you can learn Snowflake. If you are an architect, you can learn Snowflake. If you are into pre-sales, you can know Snowflake. And if you want to be part of a solutioning in the cloud world, you should know Snowflake. It's all for all roles. Okay. So yeah. one question, like, uh, like you said, like you, uh, some of the people, uh, some of the companies are uh, bypassing Spark uh, and uh, taking up Snowflakes. Can you just give me one good example on that part? No, I just want to understand why people are uh, taking a Snowflake in sp instead of Spark applications. So I just want to keen on that. Can you just give uh, me? <clears throat> I, I did not work on the... Part two snowflake migration, but I'm, I'm aware of data, you know, big data to uh, snowflake migration. Okay. As I said, for analytical purpose, it's easier okay. to do the analysis on snowflake. You have the data okay. at one place and you can integrate both structured data, semi structured data, and unstructured data for reporting analysis. Okay. So you, you can do unstructured data also in the snowflake? Yes. So it started supporting only this year. Mm -hmm. okay. One more question, Sadish. Any scheduling options is available in Snowflake? Uh, we have the services like Tasks, okay, which is a native scheduler. As I said, it supports the ecosystem as well. If you want to use a scheduling tool like uh, Airflow and all, very much you can integrate with Snowflake. Okay. okay. As such, Snowflake itself has a uh, scheduling tool like Tasks. Uh, thanks, so, Maybe, uh, yeah, it for the previous and it supports both batch and the continuous data loads. Batch is through scheduling and continuous. We have features like uh, Snowpipe, and uh, you can use APIs to do the continuous data loads. Uh, hi, uh, this is Mayandran, and I joined a little late. Sorry if I, uh, yeah, uh, of course, I missed a lot. Uh, I have a question like uh, when I see at a high level because. Even I spoke with some of my friends who are working on a snowflake. So what I, uh, I this is the doubt I have. Somebody say uh, somebody using the snowflake as a data migration tool that's uh, pulling data from AWS or Kafka into the data lake. That's a one sort of use case I could see predominantly being used. So, so is this a data migration tool? No, 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 no. It's not at all a data migration tool. It's a service. It's a cloud service. But uh, data warehouse, primarily for data warehouse and data analysis. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, you migrate the data to Snowflake and you enable your analytics on Snowflake. Oh, oh okay. 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 So basically, okay. we use Snowflake uh, predominantly between the different, uh, like a uh, curated zone, I mean, the raw zone to curated zone, so these sort of things, isn't it? Yes, yes. In Snowflake, you can maintain different layers, like st storage, you know staging raw layer whatever you call curated integrated layer and then application layers that because data warehousing is nothing but the way you organize a data to enable better analysis okay yeah that, for the that data itself is a data warehousing data. concept right, okay? right. and snowflake is primarily used as a data warehouse sorry okay yeah thank you anything okay. Oh, yeah. Hi, so this I'm Mohan. Yeah, yeah, Mohan. Yeah, uh, so this actually I have a couple of questions. Uh, so right now my organization, we are using the Teradata. Uh, actually, we are using the control M, uh, to execute the query for the in Teradata. Okay, so mm -hmm. we are running the multiple session at the same time. At the time, what mm -hmm. will happen? It will go to the queue, okay? Uh, other mm -hmm. than same time, the user also will execute. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they are... Uh, Right now, how we are using means we just uh, disable the user queries and we are enable the T codes and we'll executing the uh, this one uh, project ID. This uh, uh, I don't know how to say this one. I get it. So, yeah, we are executing oh. our process. So how we can uh, in uh, Snowflake how it will uh, achieve. You may this not one. worry about all this in uh, Snowflake. First thing, okay. if you come to, to answer your uh, answer technically, right? There's yeah. a login system in Teradata. You have read log, write log, exclusive log, and all. Okay. Yeah. When certain log happens, then any query that runs, it has to wait. Is yeah, someone yeah, it, it, will, it? Yeah, it went it to the based on the logging. There is yeah. a and in Teradata, your compute and storage are tightly coupled. Okay. 
but yes. in snowflake that is not an issue that is not at all an issue that is why i said the first thing is compute and storage are independent there is no contention in snowflake okay, okay. that lies okay. in its architecture okay so okay. anyone you are using an etl to to load the data someone else can you you know query the same table without any contention Okay, okay. See here, actually here, cl clustering how it works is like any one amp is down, it will automatically pick the next three amp and it will execute, right? Then how it will work in Snowflake? So, how... so because their data distribution is within the amps, amps is nothing like you have physically bought that and bought that infrastructure, right? The node itself, parsing engine, buying it, node, and it's all all the physical components. Correct. So you yeah. need to, you need to take care of because in Teradata on, on premise you are responsible for the infrastructure. So you have something like a hot node, standby node, and you take a data backups multiple ways, data productions, right? You use yeah. fallback options and all. Yeah. That and all is a you know maintenance or headache to do that. That yeah. is the and reason last... I said Snowflake the infrastructure and all is maintained and Snowflake guarantees ninety nine point nine nine percent data availability. How it does is through the cloud backup options like availability zones and all, which we will discuss in the class. Okay, like whenever I want to execute the more load, is it possible to increase the uh, the speed in uh, Snowflake? It's like you can. First thing is, you need not worry about you. You have to forget the Teradata architecture itself. When you know the Snowflake architecture, you yourself will be able to come. You know, previously if you want to increase the compute. You have to add the nodes, and okay. with the adding of an or app, you will have a disk also. Okay, here okay. you can bring any amount of data storage, and you can increase the scale your compute resources any amount. Yeah. Okay, so to answer okay. your question, you can increase your compute resources on the fly. Okay. So actually, last week what we faced is, uh, we execute multiple session in Teradata. There is some session uh, we mentioned the wrong uh, primary index, so it it went on the skew. So no one noticed that the, that the particular section uh, running almost three hour, but na, the data is nothing is uh, happened. But we didn't get any notification on on any other thing like that in uh, Snowflake. <clears throat> is no, it possible? Don't even worry to... about that. First okay, thing is. Okay. The headache with index the indexing okay. concept is first okay. user has to define a proper indexes. Okay. Because that that enables parallel di distribution of data into apps. That enables massive parallel processing. That enables oh. faster analysis. There's a lot of dependency from and the control is in user hand. What primary index is defining? But in Snowflake, there is no concept of indexing at all. But okay. still, okay. Snowflake does parallel processing. Okay. So the maintenance or the user dependency is very minimal. As a developer, I can I do not even worry about what is the index key I should pass. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, the okay. thanks. Uh, sorry, the last question. Uh, right now we are using uh, SSIS ETL tools to transfer the data to uh, like Oracle or other server to this Teradata. So here, mm -hmm. while I am transferring the data, I have to mention all the columns name. Like some tables have like a hundred or two hundred columns. So manually, I have to drag and write, and I have to mention the name. Sometimes, if I transfer the data to the Teradata, some column that character will not support. Again, uh, it will not support. So again, I have to go and modify the uh, the characters and uh, uh, the settings. Also, I have to modify. It. How we can uh, um, this one, you can, uh, if you are so, using a snowflake, right? You can continue using the same detail tool so that your mappings will not get disturbed because already you have the mappings, right? So yes, yes, it's yes. like you can directly switch Teradata to Snowflake. Whatever you are doing on Teradata, you can do it on Snowflake. So what you do in the ETL can remain the same. Okay. Okay. Not much will change from with respect to ETL. Okay. Okay. So again, here also we have to drag and this one automatically it will not it will check the uh, uh, character and it will not automatically it will not change right it will not allow it okay, okay. there is no provision for that but with respect okay. to semi structured data it does okay 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 not with respect to structured data okay. and and I... one more thing uh, to answer your question precisely right but there is a difference there in teradata you should specify where care 30 yeah data type yeah, 50, yeah, okay. integer okay if you define something like small int and uh, you or getting some, you define something as byte, it will fail. 
In terabyte data, you need not worry about it. Sorry, in snowflake, you need not worry about it. It's a column oh, large storage. Right. Oh, okay. That's what, okay. Then data type By default, that, so you can go with as string and you can go with as an integer or number. Okay. Yeah, usually, yeah, sometimes it will not support. So we are using the data convert uh, uh, option. Then only we are moving the data to that are data. So we are facing that similar. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. We are not very much about it. Yes. So, in Sorry, guys, we have less time. Can we move on to this one? So this will take, uh, like, Mohan will take your question offline. Yes. yes. So yeah. I will talk about the job prospects and then more than me talking about a job prospect, you, I think it should be first time. You go and check any of your job profiles and check what are the, you compare oh what God, are the open jobs on Snowflake and what yeah. are the open jobs in the technologies you are working. You will see most of the companies are hiring a lot for Snowflake. And we, they estimate that Snowflake is going to be the future for at least, you know, to seven years. Unless some company, you know, disrupts the current architecture. You see a projects from Teradata being migrated to Snowflake, Netiza to Snowflake, Oracle to Snowflake, SAP to Snowflake, and SAP BI to Snowflake, and Big Data to Snowflake. At least these are the migration projects which I have seen. Why are they migrating? First thing, if they are talking about a cloud, they are talking about either Snowflake or in Azure something like Databricks. Now, Snowflake can easily integrate with other solutions. You are using something like you are migrating from Teradata to Snowflake. You are already using an ETL tool like Informatica or, or Talent. You need not you know, disturb the ecosystem much. All you can do is you can migrate from Teradata to Snowflake. That's it. And the ecosystem will remain the same. You are building from the scratch. You have multiple options on the ecosystem. And as I said, the profiles are vast. Anyone who is working on any role like DBA, developer, okay, architect, solutioning, then Snowflake is a better, you know, to go, to go to technology. Next, someone is starting from scratch. Okay, you are precious or anyone who is a bit aware of SQL. Easily, they can learn Snowflake. And learning Snowflake is not, it's not at all that tough. Easily, you can adapt. And easily you can clear interviews. Because someone asks, what is your experience? You should be able to say that though you learn Snowflake in one month, you should be, you will have the knowledge of three years or four years experience on Snowflake. And our training content is based on completely on practical. You should be able to relate to your existing project. You should be able to give the scope of your project and say that all this I implemented in Snowflake. Easily to, it is very easy to relate with the work already you are doing. And we are focused and the content is designed in such a way that you have the complete hands on knowledge. The practicals are designed in such a way that you should be able to replicate it in your projects and you should be able to take up your first level of certification, which is a snow proposal. Okay, please check it with LinkedIn, Naukari and what you see daily any number of, uh, you know, openings, huge openings for Snowflake. Because they are not getting a resources, they are hiring other databases resources and training them internally on Snowflake. Yeah. So, sorry, Sajid, sorry to interrupt. So few questions from the, you know, uh, like users. So first is, let's say I'm working in SQL. Uh, like, how can I change my career to Snowflake? By just learning this course, can I move it or not? SQL and uh, Snowflake easily can relate, right? Because okay. Snowflake is also dependent on SQL engine. So, hmm. But the only challenge for you is you can tell your entire experience for three to four, you know, you can say two years experience on Snowflake. Just describe hmm. your project and say that you implemented it on Snowflake. Okay. Fine. Okay. And you, you, all you have to do is clear the interviews. They'll ask you questions, technical questions related to Snowflake. Which yeah. you will obviously learn it on uh, during the yeah. And one more question is, so Snowflake is heavily integrated with cloud. Do I need to learn any one cloud window? No, no need. Not at all. Okay. When so, I say it is being 
hosted on Snowflake. All you can use the cloud is if you want to load some data, if the loading is there on cloud, that is when I use of small terms like S3 and all. Else, okay. we you need not learn anything on cloud. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. And one thing this I have on question. Yeah, I have one question. So if anyone is working on a SQL background, so for them, Snowflake, how much advantage they will get in a market if you are learning a Snowflake? Whoever is working in SQL uh, part. All your development is on Snowflake, right? Yeah. The training, Sorry? most all your SQL development is on Snowflake is based on Snow SQL. Inserts, updates, yeah. okay, merge. Stored procedures, user defined functions. Okay, so now so I'm asking question is if you are working as a SQL developer, uh, okay, so how much advantage, how much, uh, I mean, uh, in market demand purpose, how much it will increase our skill set if you are learning a Snowflake? Let me see. First thing is, as such, Snowflake itself has demand. Now, in order in the market, you are coming with an SQL advantage. And someone is mm -hmm. learning a snowflake without SQL. Mm -hmm. Now, both of you will, you know, clear the questions related to the snowflake. Now, when the interviewer asks the questions related to the coding, SQL, he gives you a scenario and says, write the SQL. You have an advantage, right? You, because you already know what is the SQL. Mm -hmm. I'm, and in Snowflake course content, I'm not going to teach SQL, right? How to write the joins and all. No. That knowledge you are already having. That is why right? one of the prerequisites for Snowflake is you should have at least the basic understanding of SQL. If you learn Snowflake, probably you can learn SQL later. You are already coming with the complete knowledge of SQL. So the percentage of percent I'm asking, I mean, as a salary perspective, so the remaining perspective, say at least 50 to 70 percent or uh, I mean, demand will increase for SQL, I mean, people. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I put this question in the other way around. Uh, I think that's what I was trying to grab. So uh, knowing SQL uh, in terms of learning the complete uh, snowflake, how much he has to learn extra? For example, uh, if you say uh, in order to learn Snowflake, SQL plays 80 percentage role. No, just uh, for a discussion sake, I'm saying 80 percentage. So only to learn 20 percentage, it will fulfill. I think that's the question uh, you're trying to come, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, let me answer that. Like, uh, two things, uh, I think, Sarah. So one thing is how much salary percentage uh, we will expect. So yeah, that, correct, correct. Uh, yeah, okay. so what I would say is, see, it depends. Salaries, it uh, vastly depends. So it depends on how much opportunity you are getting, how much like offers you are able to get that. Uh, if you get more, you are going to reach 100, 200%, 250%. So in that perspective, Snowflake market is going strong. As of now, it is going very strong. I would say like, uh, you, you like the number of interviews you get is more with Snowflake knowledge. So you will get multiple hours so that you can get like uh, 100%, 200%. But it solely depends on your salary and then the company which you are getting the offer. So if you had multiple offers, obviously you're going to get the more percentage. So that's what my understanding from the industry. Yes, very much. Time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, I have some questions. Oh, no, I have another question. Hello. Uh, just a I just yeah. have a quick question. So I have a dilemma between whether to go into Databricks or to Snowflake. Is that firstly, both are comparable tools and uh, is it worth taking like, uh, I know uh, it's worth taking Snowflake over uh, uh, Databricks in what aspects? That's all. There are, as I said, right, there are similarities between Databricks okay, and Snowflake. Both are used for analysis. Okay. But you have to see the pricing, okay? Like what is the use cases? If you're having something in, you know, tightly integrated in Azure environment, probably the clients will go to Databricks, okay? But you don't have something tightly integrated because Databricks and Azure is a, you know, very famous uh, combination. Correct. No, but you want, or let's say, uh, you have a setup with AWS or GCP. You cannot, or you don't want to take up Azure your projects as MOU or no, okay? 
then they go with AWS and GC. Different clients have different, you know, uh, nag to go with the different brands, right? That's the only thing. That is why both okay. Databricks and Snowflake both are prospering actually. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think. Hi, sir. It, uh, I have some co question. It's not high level question. See, I'm having experience uh, around six years of experience in application support. So I have some knowledge on SQL and Oracle. So how this course will help me to getting from getting out of from the the application uh, support? Application support on this technology? Yeah, it's on SQL and Oracle. SQL. Then Snowflake yeah. is the right scale. Why? First thing, it's easier to learn. Now, you need not brand yourself as an application support. You can brand yourself as a developer. Itself. It's like you are, this is a, actually Snowflake is a right technology for your users. Okay. You can okay. say your experience okay, as mean, an application support and you can say that you have two, two years of development experience as well. After completing this training, easily you should be able to clear. Uh, you mean uh, after completing this course, I will be a, a developer or Snowflake developer or, or like what, that is what I'm saying. I would be? Yeah. You can say four years of your experience is on application support. You started with SQL. Then one year you have done or two years you have done on application support in Snowflake. Okay. Or maintenance works on Snowflake. And if you wanted to enhance your profile, you don't, do you want to remain as an application support for the rest of uh, next four years, then you can no. brand yourself as an application support in Snowflake as well. But if you want to jump okay. your profile to a developer, then you say that last one and a half year I'm working as a developer and previous to that two years I'm working on maintenance and application support projects on Snowflake. Okay, in Snowflake also we have a support and a development and a DBA related stuff also, right? Yes, you have a DBA related stuff. Then obviously once the product, you know, projects go live, obviously there will be a product, you know, support phase in any of the data warehouses, right? Even on Snowflake also, there are application support roles. Okay. Okay, thank you. How long this course will be? I mean, long uh, time to be there. Uh, it is for 24 hours. Design. Okay. And no, the no, timing is... The course uh, duration, I mean. The timings and duration, uh, Armugam will be communicating with all of you. Yeah. Okay. When it is start and what are the time durations? Okay. We may have multiple batches and all. That you will be notified. Okay. So we will be doing hands on also, right? After the uh, each course, I mean, the each. No, class. I, it, this training is purely driven on hands on. Okay. Any topic, I just set the context on with the PPT and are going to have a hand. Yeah, yeah. So just to you know, give you some idea, right? So as you've just seen the demo, usually in demo we used to give uh, like the theoretical knowledge only, but this we wanted to have a hands-on experience. So now itself we've seen like what's happening in Snowflake and all. Same we are going to follow in the our uh, class as well. You will be signing up with lab with uh, Snowflake where you'll have uh, 30 days access. I'm just sharing in the screen. 30 days access, which is free. You can get it yourself also now. You can just start playing around with it. So with you will get a complete hands-on that uh, we can assure you. Okay. But basic knowledge is you need to have a background with the SQL. If you are, if you're seeing this video or you are attending this one, you don't have like basic knowledge in SQL, you can let me know. We will arrange a session like uh, separately that is not included with this one. We'll arrange an SQL session. We'll give you the background to get started. With. What is the cost okay. for? So cost we've set currently, it is uh, going to be 25,000. But yeah, we will confirm you the mail whether there are any changes to that. Okay. And yeah, I just have one few more questions. Let me just put that in the screen. So yeah, course space and duration just now we explained how much coding is required in Snowflake, like Python, etc. We need SQL basics as we will be working on SQL most predominantly. So I guess Python related is not required. Uh, Satish, can you confirm? What is that? Uh, do we need Python or some other scripting knowledge to learn? Uh, no, no, not at all required. But if you are aware of Python, you can integrate Python with Snowflake. That's the only thing. But okay. to learn Snowflake, you need not have the knowledge on that. Okay. okay. So, yeah, course space, we explained. Yeah, there's, uh, uh, you know, installment is available. And uh, we offer also, like, le let's say if you wanted to try out a few classes, that we allow. And then you can just uh, decide that's also fine. 
and other snowflake what other skills required so is there any other skills required such as other than snowflake no the only reason the only prerequisite for snowflake is you should have basic understanding of sql because in interviews they ask questions on snowflake and sql yeah and also if you want to get more knowledge or something like that you can learn any one cloud which is added knowledge in the interview you will get more because if they are using snowflake they are already they might be using some other cloud technology as well so this is will check on basics of those cloud so interview perspective that you can learn and job support so job support in the sense uh, like uh, we don't provide uh, any uh, the job support even if we get any reference we would continue, uh, like definitely will refer that one to our students uh, so that kind of support we do but once you join and uh, if you have any doubts you can feel free to reach us but we don't provide job support as such like we will work for you in chair that kind of things we will not do because we wanted to you know we have this as a professional training we will train you we will you like we can give you the confidence to take all the challenges in the job with yourself and you can come back to us reach us for any questions doubts that is always there if you join our course that support will provide but uh, working for you that's in chair that things uh, we don't uh, do that yeah that's a uh, clear question okay so 18 slide most of which use case snowflake is most current market yeah so batch starting now next batch starts in july uh, 18th so yeah we just give or uh, yeah july 18th it's going to be a big day batch and it will be in the morning uh, 7 to 8:30 uh, am in uh, indian time so you can feel free to it's a big day batch and okay so that will start the batch and july 18th we'll be sending the messages continuously so that uh, you will get notified and you can join our whatsapp group as well and for this session uh, we just uh, i just want to thank uh, satish for taking this time and share this and we need your feedback to see like uh, how you liked it whether you want to proceed or not that we just give, request you guys to fill the feedback for this so it will be helpful for us to plan next and how we can you know change the sessions or something so yeah the all feedback is highly appreciated please fill the form and yeah anything else yes i think we are running out of like 23 sorry 13 or something minutes so anything else so when the piece detail will be shared first so in the group we will share as soon as possible this week or next week we will share it like my uh, maximum one one week you can expect we just uh, like finalizing the things we'll share it as soon as possible Okay, in in case if I miss any classes, then or like how do I attend it? Will so, like yeah. any video? So class level that you do, like all our courses, we record the entire session and then we you know give you access through some cloud. So the cloud technologies will change based on our you know let, latest upgrade we used to do. So you will always get the recordings and you will have access to that lifetime. So whenever you want to see, you can revisit. even if for some reason we are upgrading the course like you will get that latest session as well if we are you know removing the old one so that session you will always have so I, just to give you example we started taking big data classes for last 5 uh, years so even those students which joined my first batch still they have the access to my latest classes so based on your request we will provide so that you don't have to worry even if you miss a class you can revisit that's not an issue uh thank you bro i have one small doubt sure. in the 18th slide uh oh. there are the snowflake is used to the many of the use cases okay data integration business intelligence in the 18th slide uh, satish has shown just before so i just want to know that snowflake where the most of the use cases are using like at which place they are using snowflake as i said it is used as a data warehousing okay i said in the ecosystem it supports to you know data integration tools business intelligence tools development tools and all okay that is just the ecosystem but data warehousing use you know snowflake is used as a data warehouse okay yeah it's a data warehouse so you can start answer question i think uh, that you got the answer so i hope uh, we can wrap this session if uh, nobody has any answer any questions So yeah, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining this class and late Saturday. I hope uh, you have a nice rest of the weekend. Thanks, uh, Satish, for taking the class. Yeah, really nice. Feel free to join our WhatsApp group as well. I'll just link it in, uh, like in the video. If you're seeing in this uh, YouTube, you can join there and uh, catch up. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thanks.